Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the best foods to eat for collagen production. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm gonna be sharing with you some foods that you might wanna cut back on in your diet in terms of safeguarding the collagen in your skin, what not to eat. So stay tuned to the end to hear that too. Collagen is a protein in the deeper layers of our skin that gives the skin structure and support. As we get wiser, we start to lose collagen and our body makes less collagen with time. This results in the appearance of wrinkles. Additionally, environmental exposures like ultraviolet radiation, pollution, tobacco, generate free radicals in the skin that destroy collagen and upregulate enzyme activities that chew up collagen, further contributing to the formation of wrinkles. Not only do we lose collagen with age starting around our 30s, but the quality of the collagen that we make is just not quite as good. Of course, there are a ton of gimmicky creams, serums, lotions, potions, what have you, that you can put on your skin in the hopes of preventing wrinkles. Beyond sunscreen though, most of that is just eh, whatever. Your lifestyle factors are what matter the most. And when it comes to lifestyle, you cannot neglect your diet. As far as our diet, there are many foods that can help in the collagen cause, not only in improving the quality of the collagen, but in repairing collagen and reducing damage to collagen. Number one, protein rich foods. Think of protein as the raw material for collagen production. You really need good protein in your diet to make good collagen. And you can get protein from lean meats, fish, eggs, and also legumes. Egg whites are very high in the amino acid lysine, which is very important for collagen synthesis. Speaking of protein, what about collagen peptides? This is something you hear about everywhere. Everywhere you look, there are tons of collagen peptide supplements, drinks. Collagen peptides are some of the building blocks of the protein of collagen. And we do have studies showing that ingestion of collagen peptides, uh, they, can be up to, they can be taken up into the body and they may impact skin hydration. They have an anti-inflammatory effect potentially that can help reduce the burden of collagen destruction in the skin. Uh, you know, whether or not taking a collagen supplement is it gonna be a game changer, we really have limited data, if any at this point, to suggest that. If you're still motivated to do so, you might consider a bone broth that's really popular as a source of collagen. If you incorporate animal uh, proteins into your diet, you might want to try a bone broth uh, as a, you know, food source version of a collagen. So amino acids, peptides, those are the building blocks of protein. You can get them from your diet, lean meats, legumes, etc. Number two, you wanna make sure your diet has omega-3 fatty acids. Seriously, the Western diet is lacking on omega-3 fatty acids. These are so important. You know, your skin cells, they're coated with this fatty membrane. And omega-3 fatty acids not only are important for that, but they're also anti-inflammatory and can help fight off the damage to collagen in your skin. You can get omega-3s from walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds, and you can also get it from fatty fish like mackerel. I make sure and eat walnuts, chia seeds, and flax seeds every single day, getting those fatty acids into my diet, which are so important for not only skin health, but total body health. They have a anti-inflammatory effect. Please make sure you are getting dark green leafy vegetables in your diet. Kale, spinach, these are rich sources in vitamin C, a critical component of collagen synthesis. Vitamin C is so critical to collagen synthesis. We have vitamin C in our skin, but it gets depleted with time, with exposure to environmental stressors. If you're a smoker, stop. Uh, but smoking tobacco depletes the vitamin C levels in your skin. Vitamin C not only plays a direct role in collagen synthesis, but it's also an antioxidant, so it can help in scavenging free radicals from environmental stressors like pollution, UV exposure, and if you're still smoking, stop, but that too. Green leafy vegetables are also rich in folic acid. It's so important to have this as part of your diet because folic acid is really important 
for skin cell division, proliferation, and ensuring the safety, if you will, of the DNA in your skin cells. It's exposed to a lot of stressors, it can become damaged, and there are DNA repair pathways in place that rely on good levels of folic acid to be conducted efficiently. The next important category of foods to incorporate in your diet for collagen synthesis and integrity, if it's not already there, it's going to be red fruits and vegetables. Why? These are packed with lycopene. You can find this in tomatoes, red bell pepper, and beets. Why is lycopene important? Well, it's an antioxidant. It can help scavenge free radicals that destroy our collagen, and it also can help uh, make your skin better equipped to handle environmental stressors, namely UV exposure. Really, really important for protecting the collagen in your skin. I mentioned green vegetables, red vegetables, but don't forget your orange vegetables too, carrots and sweet potatoes. These are packed with vitamin A, which is really important for the integrity of your skin and for collagen synthesis. It helps restore and repair damaged collagen. So that's very important to make sure you have on board. It's best that you get vitamin A from your diet as opposed to a dietary vitamin A supplement. Unless you have been advised by your treating healthcare provider to take a vitamin A supplement, I strongly encourage you against doing so. Why? Vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. It can accumulate in the body to toxic levels when you're just supplementing it. It's much, much better, much safer to get it from whole foods. And you can find it in carrots and sweet potatoes. Much safer to get it that way. Do not just take a vitamin A supplement. It can be seriously dangerous to your health unless you have been advised to by your treating healthcare provider, you know, because you have an underlying medical reason to. Otherwise, don't just randomly take vitamin A because somebody on the internet told you it was good for skin. It can be very dangerous and it actually, vitamin A supplements can dry out your skin. Vitamin A in food, good. Sweet potatoes, carrots, wonderful, but don't just randomly take a vitamin A supplement. Orange foods are also rich in carotenoids, which similar to lycopene, help in uh, making your skin better equipped to handle the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation on collagen. Vitamin C rich foods, so important. Berries, kiwi, citrus fruits, Again, vitamin C is an antioxidant that helps scavenge free radicals that destroy your collagen. It's also a critical component of the process of collagen synthesis and repair. And vitamin C levels in the skin, they wane with age and exposure to environmental stressors. Citrus fruits in particular are packed with vitamin C, as is kiwi. Kiwi is like loaded with vitamin C. And of course, berries. Love berries, they're packed with vitamin C, and they're also packed with a ton of wonderful antioxidants. Blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. Make sure you get those bad boys into your diet. They are so beneficial, not only for your skin, but for your total body health. All right, the next food is controversial, and it is soy. Soy is a wonderful source of amino acids from the plant kingdom. There are a lot of myths and misconceptions about soy and whatnot, but truthfully, if you look at the literature critically, consumption of soy, like tofu and soybeans, is associated with a lower overall risk of prostate cancer, breast cancer, it appears to have a cardioprotective effect. Soy is packed with isoflavones, something called genistein, which Again, reduce the burden of inflammation in the body and soy rich foods are high in fiber, also very good for your gut health. And that genistein in soy can inhibit something called matrix metalloproteinase, which is that enzyme that gets upregulated upon exposure to environmental stressors and chews up collagen. And there are also many other smaller studies suggesting benefit of a diet that includes soy with incidents of chronic diseases. So don't fear soy, you know, if you, um, unless you're allergic to it, consider incorporating tofu, edamame, legumes into your diet or soy milk, another great source of protein, amino acids, which are helpful for building up that collagen. 
Last food that I make sure I ingest daily, garlic. Uh, I actually love the smell of garlic. I don't know why it too gets a bad rap. I think it smells great and whatever, but garlic is wonderful because it is a natural source of sulfur. It's actually very high in sulfur. Sulfur is very necessary for collagen production. As a matter of fact, that's why it has kind of a funky odor is the sulfur compounds. But those are actually really helpful in building good quality collagen. Garlic is also high in taurine and lipoic acid, which are really important for rebuilding damaged collagen. So, you know, it's, it's not possible to go through life without damaging your collagen. That's just, you know, the natural part of life. Environmental stressors, skin injury, Having good lipoic acid and taurine levels on board help in the rebuilding of those collagen uh, proteins in the skin. All right, so those are some of the best foods for collagen. Now, uh, you're obviously here because you care about wrinkles and, and anti-aging for the skin. But don't forget, collagen is present throughout the body. It's present in our joints, ligaments, and throughout you know, our different organs. I mean, there are a variety of different collagens. Incorporating these foods in your diet helps with total body collagen. Very important. You know, as we start losing collagen and the quality of our collagen dwindles, you know, you're more likely to have joint pains and discomfort, muscle aches. So a diet that is rich in these anti-inflammatory collagen supporting foods ultimately potentially can help reduce some of those issues. You'll notice the theme of all of these foods, they're anti-inflammatory, uh, antioxidants, they help fight off damaging inflammatory uh, exposures. Very important, not only for your skin, but for your total body health, functioning of your cardiovascular system, your uh, neurologic system, every body system can benefit from making sure that you incorporate a diet that includes these foods and is varied. You don't just wanna solely eat kale. You don't wanna just solely eat egg whites. You don't wanna just solely eat garlic. God, don't just do that, nobody will like you. Um, you need to make sure that you're incorporating a variety and I think one of the more important things is not only the variety, but that you actually enjoy these. If you don't like something that I mentioned here, you don't have to eat it. You know, I follow a vegan diet. I'm not gonna be consuming fish or, or collagen drinks. I find a way around that by making sure that I get enough protein from legumes and other plant sources. So I'm not missing out on those things, but uh, you know, to each their own as far as what they like. Uh, don't punish yourself by eating things you don't like. If you hate kale, you don't have to eat it. You made it this far, what do you want to, I don't wanna say don't eat, like I, I don't like extremes, but things that you might want to at least consider minimizing in your diet, especially if you take a objective look at the foods that you eat. If these things that I'm gonna mention next, the bulk of your diet, ooh, that is, that's not good, not only for your skin, the collagen in your skin, but for your total body health. And that is foods that are high in advanced glycation end products. What? What the heck are advanced glycation end products? Uh, this is actually a really important part of health and chronic disease is glycation. Glycation refers to the reaction between sugars like glucose with things like proteins, lipids, and nucleic acid that you can find in like DNA and you know uh, all the things that encode our genes basically. Glycation is not something that you can avoid. It is a natural part of life and of, a, of aging. Formation of ages is a natural part of aging. And ages are inflammatory. They contribute to total body inflammation and are associated with chronic diseases like uh, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, as well as a variety of cancer, you know, cancer in general. Uh, so they're not, they're no bueno. And in terms of your skin, they affect the quality of the collagen and elastin in your skin. But beyond the natural process of life and your body physiology that generates ages throughout your lifetime, the other source is from your diet. There are certain foods that are very high in advanced glycation end products. And a diet that is rich in these foods does not bode well for the health of your skin or your total body health. It is going to be more associated with chronic inflammatory diseases like 
cardiovascular disease, cancer, all of the all of the big scary chronic diseases can be associated with higher levels of advanced glycation products and advanced glycation rich diet. What foods do you need to avoid? Actually, it boils down, no pun intended, to a lot more than just the food itself, but how the food is prepared. Foods cooked at high heat or fried are some of the worst offenders in terms of of a, a burden of advanced glycation end products. They have the higher, higher amounts as opposed to foods that are boiled. A quick way to lower the burden of ages in a food that you digest is simply to change the method of preparation. Foods that are fried or roasted at high heat have a higher burden of ages than foods that are boiled or steamed. So switching from grilled meats to maybe <laughs> sous vide, for example, French fries, which are deep fried, have a much higher level of ages in comparison to a boiled or steamed potato. So switch up the method of preparation. I love French fries. And again, I'm not telling you guys never to eat these things or that they're an absolute no. But if your diet is solely based on French fries, probably not gonna bode well for the health of your skin long term. Red meat and in general foods that are high in animal fat have much higher levels of ages of advanced glycation end products. So choosing, if you, if you eat meat, choose a leaner cut of meat that can help in reducing your dietary burden of age. Also consider how you're preparing it, uh, barbecuing, grilling, frying, smoking, ups the age qu quantity. All right, the other, thing in your diet that I think is easier to modify and should be modified is the burden of processed junk that you consume. Processed foods are super high in advanced glycation end products. Processed pastries and processed baked goods. I'm looking at you, Pop-Tart. Uh, those are really high in ages. They're very sugary at baseline and the methods which was it, with which they are prepared and refined further contribute to the burden of age in, in them. Uh, they, they're aging you. <laughs> uh, so um, again, you don't have to eliminate these things from your diet. If the only breakfast food that you eat is Pop-Tarts, consider swapping out a few breakfasts with, from Pop-Tarts to a berry smoothie. There you go. Tasty, packed with antioxidants, much better for your total body health. It's not just about sugar. People will fixate on sugar and think they should completely eliminate sugar from their diet. But sugars in food, like fruits and vegetables, they're accompanied by fiber that you know, affects how those foods are metabolized. Processed sugary foods don't have that and they're quick, you know, they go through much more quickly and spike your blood sugar and that ultimately contributes to inflammation in the body that is associated with chronic disease. Simple changes that you can make that can make your diet more collagen protective, if you will, is to incorporate more plants into your diet, rich in anti-inflammatory compounds and have an overall low burden of advanced glycation end products. Lean towards moist heat as opposed to high heat. Slow cooking is a great way to, I didn't mention slow cooking, I said sous vide. Slow cooked meats like in stews, better in terms of the burden of ages. Uh, so slow cooking is a much better way, low and slow, much healthier for you. All right, those are my foods for collagen building. Um, if you still have questions about the utility of a collagen supplement, I, don't, I know I really didn't address that here. I'm gonna link down below in the description box my video on collagen supplements. I dive into that more in detail, so check that out if you are you know, being tempted by the collagen gummies and smoothies and collagen Pop-Tarts. So yeah, check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.